Back now on the Pulse, looking at all things people, power, and politics, and how it'll impact your bank account this year. Dan Casey with Bridge River Advisors is in the hot seat tonight. We thank him for being here. And by the way, we're about to talk about Harris's plan and Trump's plan. And Casey's going to talk about it from an objective point of view, talking about what each plan offers that could be good or bad, depending on where you stand on the financial spectrum here. So we thank you for joining us here today. Thanks for having me. Uh, we'll just go in alphabetical order. Harris first, right? Yes. yes. Uh, for Harris, she has some lofty goals. One of them is uh, one of the headlines of her plan is, hey, let's do a $25,000 down payment assistance for some new home buyers. Yes. Um, is that something that's feasible or does that seem more of like a campaign push that would be very hard to get through. Yeah, it's definitely a, it's definitely a campaign push, and, they're, they're, and of course they're all doing that right now. But um, I think something like that could could uh, get through. It's it's uh, I don't think it would be very costly in the sense that I don't think that there'd be a whole lot of people according to the the income requirements that she had in there. Um, I don't think there'd be a lot that would uh, that would be able to take advantage of it is the problem. So I don't think it would be a huge issue to get through. That's interesting because so many people see this, and I, I hate to say it because you know me on this show, I pick on social media because it's a but there's a lot to pick on. Yeah, right. People go on there and they say things that aren't true, like everybody, $25,000 for everybody. That's not what she's saying it's here. This is saying. something for a very small number of people. Yes, exactly. Even when they when they jump over to like uh, means testing for Social Security, making you know the rich pay more, it's again, the, the rich, it's it's a very small part of Social Security. It's not going to make that big of a difference. It's, it's a lot of, it's, again, it's just a lot of campaigning right now. Let's talk a little bit about the Trump plan. Um, so many people who criticize uh, his tax cuts, they say, that you're only hitting the tax cuts for the richest of people. But we've seen when he's been president before that he he made tax cuts for middle class folks as well, right? To he be did. fair. Yes, Talk he did. That. Yeah, and it kind of worked. It was, you know, we had the lowest unemployment we saw in 50 years. We had a, a really, really good economy. Um, so, yeah, he cut the, the tax rates. It was about 4 or 5% on average, I think, for everybody. Um, corporation taxes, he dropped it to 21%. And again, people look at that as helping the wealthy. But we do have to remember the wealthy are usually the ones who own the companies that employ us. Um, so it's it's if it gives them more money, they're able to hire more people. And again, linking back to you know uh, a really great economy when he was uh, president. So we know what that's going to look like. And that's something that he's really run on and wants to remind people about because so much time has passed. In the meantime, we have inflation and the inflationary uh, prices for groceries and gas and everything in between. That's been a huge campaign point. In your mind, not as a campaign advisor, but as someone who's looking at the economy, what needs to happen to bring that inflation, continue to bring it down? Yeah, I think, you know, what they're doing right now, um, we're, we're at probably about, I think it's in the mid, mid twos, you know, high twos, which is why the Fed today cut the rates uh, 50 basis points, which was kind of a shock, uh, kind of implying, showing us that they're, they're, they're going to hold steadfast and, and be very strong and continue to drop those rates throughout the year if it is to spur the economy. But inflation is headed down, and I think it's, it's going to continue to, to head that way. And it, and it has to, because one of the two uh, mandates of the Federal Reserve is to make sure inflation is at 2%. So if, the, if it doesn't continue to go down there, then they will rate, maybe go back to raising rates a little bit just to kind of curb the growth a little bit. You've taken a close look at both the Harris plan and the Trump plan. Uh, back to Harris for a moment. What is it in her plan that you think uh, isn't a campaign promise that would simply be a little bit easier to implement and something that could actually help people? Um, I guess a lot of the a lot of her, their income tax credit that they want that she wants to put in uh, the child tax credit. I think bringing that back would be pretty easy, and I think that that would help a lot of people. Um, so that part, I'm, I'm 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 glad that she brought the, those those back. So I think that'll help a lot of people. And it's about, easy to get through. Yeah, and you heard Trump uh, just in the last few days. In fact, in Flint, talk about tariffs. Um, for those who aren't economists or experts, talk a little bit about how a tariff would impact the customer and the companies that, of course, sell these cars in other countries. Yeah, so the last tariffs that he put on and, and the Biden administration kept them, um, it was mostly steel, uh, washing machines, uh, things like that. And so it really just adds a tax uh, to the, to the uh, import. So we're uh, paying more as consumers. But the idea is, um, well, that spurs local uh, uh, businesses in the U.S. to maybe uh, get into the production of it so we can buy more of uh, domestic products. That's the idea. So the tariff obviously hurts the company that's trying to sell the, the stuff. So if it's a Chinese car company or a battery company from overseas, you put a tariff and now it makes it more expensive to buy that product. But it yes. also makes it pricier for the person who wants to buy the product. Yes. And so, but again, but it spurs 
domestic uh, makers of that uh, to get into it. Now, on the other side, we saw when he did raise the tariffs on washing machines, uh, J.D. Vance came on a, a, a national uh, station and said, you know, the prices uh, didn't go up like people thought they would. Well, they did a little bit, and then they also raised uh, on dryers. They raised the prices. So it really depends on what study you look at. Um, uh, a 10% across the board kind of also negates his his. Uh, He's always said that he wants to use it as a as a tool to spur uh, the others to lower the tar tariffs for us. Um, but if you just do a blanket 10%, it's not going to spur anything, right? It's just a blanket 10%. So it's a it just depends on how he uses it. Um, and then he's going to you know propose 60% on Chinese goods. So we'll have to see how it trickles we're down. Gonna, we're going to watch it carefully. One last yeah. question for you. I feel like there's there's more than one metrics, but there's two metrics we always hear about in the media about how people measure. The economy. They talk about the Dow Jones, and then they talk about your pocketbook every day. Yeah. If you're not invested heavily in the stock market, and you're a man or woman like so many of our good viewers who are literally just trying to make it paycheck to paycheck, and they're not invested in the stock market, the Dow doesn't really make a huge difference for them. What matters is how much it costs to buy things at the grocery store, right? Yes. Talk yes. about that. Yeah. So in inflation, we're back to inflation, right? Um, and it, what we've done by raising interest rates, uh, by slowing the economy and slowing growth, uh, it has worked and it has dropped. You know. So inflation was uh, almost 9% a couple of years ago. Now it's, it's under three. So it's, it's working. An interesting conversation that will continue with you. Thank you so much, Dan Casey, for Thanks joining for us on me. The Pulse.